Hi, good afternoon, um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for extending the invitation uh, to include Vanuatu to be part of the launching of this uh, prestigious um, foundation and its focus on the endangered languages because Vanuatu is high, is, has got a high linguistic density per capita in the world. But at the same time, it is also facing this issue of endangered languages. And Soro Soro is a testimony, a language from this um, dying language is a testimony to the fact that the indigenous languages are declining as a result of globalization. I am very happy today to present this issue um, in the context of Vanuatu. The language situation of Vanuatu and what is Vanuatu actually doing in order to address this issue of preserving and promoting its indigenous languages and cultures. Vanuatu, formerly known as the New Hebrides until 1980, is situated in the Southwest Pacific. The Pacific Ocean where Vanuatu is uh, situated in is linguistically complex, with almost a quarter of the world's languages spoken among a population of less than 1% of the world's population. Vanuatu belongs to the Melanesian group. Melanesian groups in the Pacific are highly multi multilingual. If you look at the chart, Vanuatu has got over 100 languages. Vanuatu is a group of 80 islands stretching 1,760 kilometers in a north-south direction. The people are known as Ni Vanuatu and are described as Melanesians, a name derived from the tack complexion of the phys physical appearance. All the 106 indigenous languages belong to the Proto-Oceanic branch of the Austronesian language family. Historians agree that the people of the Western Pacific migrated from the Southeast Asia, among whom the ancestors of Vanuatu's Melanesians, who settled in the Solomon Islands, then to Vanuatu about 3000 BC. Today, the Lapita pottery is an archeological evidence to support this linguistic hypothesis regarding the migration and the settlement of the early Austronesian speakers. And all these 106 languages are protected under the constitution of the Republic of Vanuatu. Pishlama, an English-based lexifier pidgin, came into being as a result of the contact between the early traders, missionaries, and the natives in the 1800s or in the 19th century. But today, Pishlama is the biggest language in Vanuatu in terms of the speakers, numbers of speakers. It is also given the highest status in the constitution of the Republic of Vanuatu, not only as just one of the three official languages, but also as the national language of the country due to its unifying force within this multilingual country. As a result of 74 years of Anglo-French condominium of the New Hebrides until the 1980, today, French and English are given equal status in the constitution of the Republic, as not only as the two of the three official languages, but also as the two principal languages of education. The status as the languages of education and powerful cultures today is also a threat to the small indigenous languages which are marginalized in the usage. So, the, linguist, the linguistic situation is multilingual. There are over 100 indigenous languages. English, French, and Pishlama are three official languages. And while English and French remain the principal languages of education, Pishlama is given the highest status as the national language of Vanuatu. Immigrant languages are also protected under the Constitution. Oh, 
questions at this time? Um, statistics reveal today that there is a decline in the indigenous languages. From the 106 indigenous languages, 81 are still active, 17 are already endangered, and 8 are already extinct. However, today researchers still identify undocumented languages which are on the verge of extinction. Statistics also reveal that out of those 105, 81 active languages, only 13, 13 of them are considered large with over 5,000 speakers. This means that most of the indigenous languages have small number of speakers, and as such, they are already endangered to a certain extent. The reasons for this decline in indigenous languages are common worldwide, such as death of the last speaker of language, or language shift. In Vanuatu, language shift is a common phenomenon due to the different facets of globalization, whether it be religion, education, urbanization, or even modern economy. Araki, the language from which I hail, and from which the word Soro Soro originates, is a dying language because it has shifted to another language, the status of which has been elevated by religious and missionary work. So what is the country doing about this problem? After independence in 1980, there were awareness and move to preserve and promote indigenous languages and traditional systems and cultures. There was really a paradox, a dilemma, because people want to be part of the modern economy through different facets of globalization. Yet, there was this strong desire to promote, to preserve and promote traditional languages and cultures. This resulted in appropriate legal and policy framework in place which advocate for the preservation and promotion of multilingualism, linguistic and cultural diversity as the national asset. And also to promote and preserve indigenous languages at home, in community, as well as through the education, through the formal education system, through the constitution, legislative acts, national language policies, and even vernacular education policy. The government, through the Ministry of Internal Affairs, has set up the Vanuatu Cultural Center, a national museum, as its mechanism in place to oversee the protection of its traditional cultures of Vanuatu. And Vanuatu Cultural Center has played an important role in preserving and promoting traditional knowledge. Community field workers, is a model used by the Vanuatu Cultural Center to carry out research in the traditional aspects of the communities. Today, there are around 80 males and females who carry out research on various cultural topics within the given communities. And without being paid, this is a model. They carry out the research while doing their normal routine. The only time when money is involved is when they have to come together for annual, on an annual basis to submit their research and be given another topic for research. The cultural center is also involved in promoting, preserving and promoting um, the cultures through mini arts festival, provincial arts festival, or even national arts festival to showcase different aspects of culture, such as different food preparation, dancing, Music, <laughs> sun drawing is unique to Vanuatu. They are not just geometric pictures of uh, patterns. To be, cultural, to be culturally literate in this sun drawing, one needs to know how to draw the physical form as well as to understand the deeper meaning it conveys in association to one's tradition, history, connection to nature, and the spiritual connection to the land. Due to the uniqueness to Vanuatu, in 2003 it was proclaimed 
as a masterpiece of the oral and intangible heritage for humanity by UNESCO. In 2004, UNESCO began funding programs to safeguard these sand drawings through arts festivals. This young boy is seen uh, doing the sand drawing during the mini arts festival, and this is a positive scenario showing that this traditional knowledge has been transmitted to the younger generations who will be the, who will be the future custodians of this uh, cultural knowledge. The Vanuatu Cultural Center, through the program known as the Vanuatu Young People's Program, also organizes traditional education targeted at urban youths. During these sessions, resourceful people from its cultural and linguistic communities facilitate the education for the youths of the communities. The aim is to help them to know their languages and to understand and appreciate the traditional knowledge of the cultural communities. The environmental unit of the Ministry of Lands also play an important role in the preservation of biodiversity through which language associated with this can be preserved and promoted. The establishment of the VAT conservation area of 20,000 hectares incorporates conservation of the biodiversity and its linguistic ecosystem and the sustainability into modern economy. Why into modern economy? Because people have to pay in order to go and visit this park. The environmental unit also incorporates a traditional way of managing its resources into its natural and national approach of uh, managing its uh, national resources. The, through the tourism office and Vanuatu Cultural Center, cultural villages are also encouraged. These are examples of how traditional ways are being preserved and promoted while at the same time benefiting economically through tourism. These are examples of cultural calendar because these are cultural events and the events take place according to the cultural calendars of the natives. This is a big killing ceremony. It's a male rite of passage. Female rite of passage. This is a toka ceremony of reconciliation to celebrate the end of tribal wars and to seek forgiveness and hope for the peaceful future. This is a land diving and it is associated with yam harvest. So all these are examples of how you incorporate traditional knowledge system into modern economy. You preserve it while at the same time making money, benefiting economically from tourism. Vanuatu Cultural Center has also produced a history book, art from the work done by community field workers. And this is incorporating traditional knowledge into the vernacular education system. NGOs and other individuals also contributed documentation and literature material in the, lang in the languages of Vanuatu. Researchers who are interested in uh, documenting Vanuatu languages have to go to the Vanuatu Cultural Center for approval. The national language policy, according to the national language policy, researchers must give back something to the community, maybe in terms of a dictionary or maybe in terms of literature materials in that language. Here you can see Soro Soro comes from Iraqi, and this is some of the last speakers of Iraqi. Iraqi is a dying language which has shifted to another vernacular due to missionization. This is a group of last speakers who have set up a language community, sorry, a language comedy to work on strategies to revive the language. Some methods include other literacy, translation of hymns in church and biblical translation by SIL. And I'm standing here before you to acknowledge Alexander Francois, a French linguist who has done a lot in documenting the language and also producing a dictionary and uh, traditional storybooks that 
that natives use today as a source of reference. We also would like to thank UNESCO through the Japanese Funds in France for providing finance to document literature material to support the vernacular education in this language. And uh, the literature material includes things like, among other things, different semantic areas in, such as cultural calendar, which is very important in the, Vanua, in the Vanuatu culture. However, shifting from an oral tradition to a formal education system is very difficult for a multilingual si situation because there are so many languages to document, so many languages in which to produce literature material to support this vernacular education system. Therefore, when I, the constraints related to vernacular education include capacity building, finance, and literature material. In this picture, you can see the three authorities. In the middle is the, the president of the National Council of Chiefs representing the traditional governing system. Flanked on his right, on the right, is the prime minister, and on the left is the president of the Republic of Vanuatu during the launching of the year of traditional economy in 2007. 2007 and 2008, were officially declared as the years of traditional economy. This is a kind of revisiting the provisions of the constitution to preserve and promote the traditional ways of doing things that have sustained the lives of Nivanuatu for many, many generations. It is a way to officially acknowledge the work done by the Vanuatu Cultural Center. It is also a way to acknowledge the sustainability of the traditional way that 80% of the Nivanuatu population who live in the rural area continue to practice today. And it is also acknowledging the importance of traditional economy and its importance to the survival of the linguistic ecosystem and its importance in complementing the modern economy today for the Nivanuatu people. So, the recommendation today is that sustainable approach to preserving and promoting indigenous languages and cultures through intergenerational transmission within the homes is a very important area to consider and to practice. Capitalist approach where money is spent is not a sustainable way for Vanuatu. And that's why 2007 and 2008 were declared as years of traditional economy. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention.